So now that you've identified the ways that you want to intervene and what those things are called, um, hopefully you will have found a few examples of those things being done really well elsewhere. Uh, you also have the option, of course, of inventing new policy ideas. In practice, we often try to look for policy interventions that have had success in other places, right? We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, but once we've identified the different policy options that we are going to explore, um, we want to be very clear about defining them, uh, describing how they work um, and, and what they are and where they come from. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over very briefly how that works here. So if you're looking at the materials in Blackboard, you'll see that um, there's one, one definition you really need to know, and this is the null, right? This is the idea of no policy change. Um, this is basically the current state of affairs. So um, we always include this in our analysis as a baseline. So we say, if we were to do absolutely nothing about this problem, what would be the outcomes? We use this to establish the baseline conditions um, against which we would be measuring the other policy options. Um, in my example, right, I've set my policy objective and I've chosen to intervene at the point of providing uh, affordable housing so that if people are displaced, right, they have somewhere to go. Um, and I've identified two potential policy alternatives, right? So policy alternative one would be to contract uh, with a, a developer to build affordable housing. Um, and policy alternative two is to subsidize the moving costs for displaced residents. Um, and in my definition here, I'm just giving enough detail so that I have enough information about how this policy is going to work so that I can make good, strong, reliable predictions for how it's going to perform. Um, if I'm too vague with my policy definition and, and background, then there's no real basis for any kind of projection of how it might perform. So I wanna have at least some detail. Um, I wanna to try to include some numbers, right? Because um, knowing how much money we have to work with really helps us identify what kinds of outcomes we can expect. And I wanna be kind of very clear who's going to be implementing the policies, which level of government, um, and whether or not there are going to be partners involved. Uh, the more information you can identify at this stage, the better. Um, and then, of course, I've got no policy change defined as one of my, my options here. Um, so in the current state of affairs, if we do nothing, um, there will be no uh, city-run, city-operated policy solutions to solve the, the housing displacement issue in the event of flooding. Um, that doesn't mean residents couldn't turn to FEMA or the Red Cross for help, um, but the city would not be implementing a policy solution, right? So if there were no policy change, that's what would happen. So as you start to formulate your policy options for your assignment, uh, be sure to really clearly define and lay out specifically how those options are going to work, as well as the, the null or no policy change.